Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with some more Inca. Uh, I think this is like the fourth episode. Uh, the Spanish just came and uh, basically uh, killed uh, basically the Inca's king, you know, and um, took a lot of their gold and uh, set a trap for him and just killed a lot, you know, like a lot of the Inca. I mean, like, they were outnumbered. It was like, well, like, there's like a couple of hundred to like 6,000, 3,000, some, something like that. Some crazy number like that. But they were just like, they were outgunned. Like, didn't... I mean, the Spanish had the element of surprise. They had the better equipment, you know, armor, the better they had guns. I mean, they had horses. I mean, did they just, it, it was basically like, you know, like if someone today, today, you know, like a hundred people with today's equipment went back you know, and fought in World War One. you know, just the technology differences, I kind of guess, kind of thing. That's the way I kind of look at it. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> All right, I just ate some popcorn. And... Joking. But, uh, yeah, but now, uh, so rebellion, so, I mean, obviously, uh, Inca is going to be uh, rising up, I guess, and the fight back here. And, yeah, and um, when you guys mentioned in the comments that the gold, that the Spanish took, uh, he kind of took it a lot. Of, uh, the king kind of made the Spanish kind of take it from a lot of his, I guess, uh, a lot of the, the people who were going to like challenge him to be king, you know, a lot of the, a lot of his threats in his own kingdom. He kind of sent, like, he kind of sent the Spanish to their areas and got most of their goals so that they weren't much of a threat. So he kind of used it to his advantage a little bit. Uh, I think that's kind of what you say. You can you can correct me in the comments if you want. And as and somebody when you guys said that all this gold when it got brought back to Europe kind of devalued a lot of the gold because there's so much of it. Maybe you guys can kind of like confirm that as well. But anyways, guys, we're gonna jump into this and see what the Inca have in store and all this cool stuff. So I just did a video on uh, South America, which was was cool because you know I'm doing this and then I did South America, so uh, you know a lot of similarities. Because some of this stuff got brought up, so that was kind of cool. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that one out. South America, pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, Let's jump into this. Three, two, one, bam. The body of the god king Atahualpa lay partially burned in a hastily dug ditch near Cajamarca. His empire was now in. Yeah, he. Uh... He, he wanted to, his body needed to be preserved for the afterlife. So he basically, so he, so he wouldn't get burned alive, you know, agreed to, I guess, be a Christian or whatever, you know, uh, I forget, I get how you, what you call it. But anyways, yeah, yeah. He kind of did what the Spanish wanted him to do just because he wanted his body preserved. But yeah, anyways. And in a hastily dug ditch near Cajamarca. His empire was now in the hands of Francisco Pizarro and his brothers. On their long march towards Cuzco, they encountered the teenage brother of Huascar, Manco Inca, and placed him on the throne. Wielding power through this puppet king, the conquistadors were welcomed into Cuzco as liberators rather than conquerors. The new Inca-Spanish military alliance crushed all forces within the empire that had remained loyal to Atahualpa's faction. With the massive empire now firmly in his grip, and a military alliance secured with the Manco Inca, Pizarro and his brothers set about transforming Tahuantinsuyu into New, new Castile. Castile. Lands and lordships over the natives were handed out to Pizarro's men. Those few hundred conquistadors, many of them poor and illiterate, soon found themselves rich beyond their wildest expectations. Huh. After Manco Inca's coronation in Cusco, both leaders of the Spanish expedition would leave the city. Francisco Pizarro would go to the coast to found the city now known as Lima, and Diego de Almagro, frustrated that Pizarro had been named the sole governor of Peru, and furious that Pizarro had refused to share Atahualpa's ransom with him and his men, departed with 570 Spanish cavalry and foot soldiers, and with 12,000 native troops. His goal was to conquer the southern part of the Inca Empire in what is now Chile. 
The Inca capital, Cusco, was now left in the hands of Manco Inca and Pizarro's two younger brothers, Yuan and Gonzalo. Manco Inca tried to get to work rebuilding his fractured and smallpox-ridden realm, but with Juan and Gonzalo now in charge of the city, the illusion... That's yes, right. Uh, a lot of the big reason that the Spanish was able to kind of uh, take over the way they did, because you know, a giant you know, percentage of the population died by smallpox. And so, uh, I remember, I think a, a couple of you guys said in the comments, too, that... Uh, that was a big re that was a big reason why a lot of these European uh you know you know powers, you know, like like you know, like the British, you know, and Spain and that uh these diseases got brought to these places and this ha this, uh, this apparently did not happen to just, you know, uh the Inca Empire. So that was a, a big reason why they're able to, you know, conquer a lot of these different areas because, you know, these populations weren't used to it. It's so a lot of them died just from disease. Uh, but some of you guys also noted that, you know, but, it's, but this doesn't go for Asia because they kind of, they're kind of used to it a little bit because they're, you know, kind of, you know, kind of new about the Europeans, you know, and so they're kind of, kind of used to it, right? Their body was, grew, you know, accustomed to it, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And so that's why, you know, the Europeans had a hard time, I guess, in conquering, uh, Asia. I also think that part of that reason is, uh, just word of mouth is a lot of, uh, you know, the uh, people, you know, in Asia, they kind of word of mouth and they, they kind of knew the tactics to have better armor because they all, you know, they're all they're all there. It wasn't like they're on the other side of another ocean. So, yeah, uh, I, I was going to go somewhere with that, but I'm sorry, I lost my uh, I forgot what else I was going to say. But anyways, yeah smallpox ridden realm, but with Juan and Gonzalo now in charge of the city, the illusion of an equal alliance between the Emperor and the Pizarros quickly shattered. Juan and Gonzalo harassed Manco Inca for gold, silver and native women. They soon began to disrespect him in public, and then Gonzalo Pizarro kidnapped and raped Manco Inca's wife, Cura Oclo. What? Soon he was imprisoned and beaten. Manco Inca now became aware of the horrific bargain he had made for the title of Sapa Inca. Tensions had reached a boiling point. In early November of 1535, two years after the death of Atahualpa, the puppet King Manco took his first steps towards rebellion. A secret meeting of the Inca nobility was called, and Manco made a speech to his chiefs. I, am I guess, you know, because the population is probably growing, he's become more powerful and people are getting sick of the Spanish and the I guess Spanish are probably, you know, not expecting this, you know, I guess, I don't know, but yeah, I, all these, a bunch of different cultures, this is bound to happen, but all these bad things being done to your people, I mean, if you're going to take Spanish, you're going to take over an area, you kind of have to play goody goody with the people, which I guess never really happens in history, you know, it's just like, you know, and the Europeans came to like America, you know, and kind of the natives, you know, like you know, the United States, they kind of killed a lot of the natives there and didn't really. So the conquering country, you know, doesn't really, I guess, care about the, the natives that are already there. I don't know. Right. ...was called and Manco made a speech to his chiefs. I ask you, where did we meet them? What is it that we owe them, or which one of them did we injure, so that with these horses and weapons of iron, they have made such cruel war on us? It seems to me that it would be neither just nor honest that we put up with this. Rather, we should strive with the utmost determination to either die to the last man, or to kill our cruel enemies. Right. Manco fled the city into the harsh Andes, and soon the Inca war machine began to slowly creak into motion. Chasqui's runners breathlessly crisscrossed the empire, bringing word of Manco's rebellion to the native chiefs. Soon the conquistadors, now the feudal lords, were individually lured away from their palaces and manors and clubbed to death. Within months, these small-scale attacks had killed more Spaniards than had died in the entire conquest thus far. 
Wow. As reports smart. of these deaths trickled into Cusco and Lima, far off in the mountains, native soldiers started gathering clubs, axes, spears, and halberds from their warehouses and marching across the Andes to answer the call of their emperor. The 20-year-old great-great-grandson of Pachacuti, who had served as a meek puppet for two years, was now at war with the invaders from across the sea. Like a giant blanket covering the hillsides, the immense legions of Manco converged on Cusco. Hernando, Juan and Gonzalo Pizarro were now trapped inside, along with 196 Spaniards, a handful of African slaves and Morisco women. And, um... And Inca's ready for him this time. I mean, this is similar to, I guess, kind of what happened before. No, I guess it's not similar at all. But, you know, the Incas are coming. They, they're coming to kill him. And before you had, you know, Spanish had this, you know, the surprise. And they had, like, the weapons. They just had him, like, you know, the ambush. You know, they just had, everything was going for him in the ambush. This time, Incas, Incas are ready for him. And, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the Spanish are going to be at their mercy here. So I wonder how this kind of plays out. Along with 196 Spaniards, a handful of African slaves and Morisco women, and hundreds of native allies. Early in the morning, on Saturday the 6th of May, 1536, conch shell trumpets rang out from the mountains surrounding Cusco. A curtain of javelins, rocks and arrows wow. darkened the sky while 100,000 soldiers, wielding massive spears and clubs, began to slowly make their way down the hillside, encircling the glittering city. The constant barrage forced the defenders to immediately run for cover. Inca troops poured into the city and forced the Spaniards to retreat into two buildings located in the main plaza. Manco knew from experience that Inca weapons were ineffective against Spanish armor and cavalry. It was near impossible for an Inca to kill a Spaniard in hand-to-hand -hand combat. No matter the strength behind a blow or the bravery of the warrior, stone and bronze could never pierce steel. The Spanish could only be killed if knocked from their horses or with a direct impact to the face. Manco's strategy was to tighten a noose around the city, trap the Spaniards, and then overwhelm them with his superior numbers. Okay. In a panic, the Spaniards darted between the two buildings, now transformed into bunkers. Hernando Pizarro was screaming orders and doing his best to reinforce his position. But before they could even formulate a real plan, the roof of the buildings caught fire. Inca slingers and archers were firing red-hot rocks and flaming arrows into the city. The trapped Spaniards soon found themselves suffocating from the smoke. Hot ashes filled the air. Broken beams fell from the ceiling, tossing up fresh burning embers. As the heat became more intense, it seemed all hope was lost. Until suddenly, the fire went out. Some Spaniards claimed to have seen the Virgin Mary herself descend from heaven and put out the flames. What? The Inca Chronicles report that it was the African slaves that the Spanish had stationed on the roof who put it out under a barrage of arrows and rocks. The Incas continued to heave against the Spanish defences. Unable to cut through their armour or defend against a cavalry charge, they swarmed the city and laid a noose around the precarious Spanish position. At the end of the day, they had to. Because yeah, you have them outnumbered, like hundred thousand to like well, like a few hundred. You know, if you include like you know the slaves and what you know the I guess the, you know the natives are loyal to them. But uh, yeah, if, if it, you know just like if it's ten on one, eventually you know, you're going to be dragged ten people on one guy on a horse. I mean, you, know, you probably a couple of them are, are going to get you know killed. But I'm sure someone's eventually going like, to be able to like, pull them down from the horse. I'm sure. And at least try and rip a helmet off or something. They're they're gonna get to him eventually with, you know, if you have them outnumbered like that, you know. So, yeah, I mean, the armor is gonna help, but you know, when you, if overwhelming numbers, you know, it's gonna it's not gonna work that long. <laughs> Around the precarious Spanish position. At the end of the day, they had to cease the attack, barricade the streets they had taken, and rest. From his command center nearby in Calca, Manco Inca no doubt was certain that within days he would see his men storm the Spanish holdout and bring him victory. I don't like the way they're talking about this though, because it's all there. I'm assuming that like the Spanish, you know, uh, 
you know, Spanish leaders are going to escape or something because the, it seems like that's what they're insinuating here because, you know, that's just how they're talking. I mean, I could be wrong here, but it, it just seems like where it's going here. The siege dragged on, however. As months passed, new strategies had to be developed. The Inca tore apart roads and streets in order to neutralize cavalry charges. They feigned retreats down narrow alleys in order to lure horsemen into traps. Bolas, a weapon normally reserved for hunting, was introduced in order to tie up charging horses' legs. The battle for Cusco was brutal and long. Spaniards on horses charged at Inca soldiers down narrow streets, and the entire city was essentially reduced to ashes. In the city, one eyewitness wrote, the Indians waged such a fierce attack that the Spaniards thought themselves a thousand times lost. That's crazy. While he besieged Cuzco, Manco had sent his finest general, Quiso, to tie down Francisco Pizarro, who was currently in Lima. Quiso was an excellent tactician. He had realized that attacking cavalry on a level ground was a death sentence. Inca troops could do nothing against a charge. Instead, he would use the terrain against them, only meeting the Spanish on steep hills and mountains. There he would lure them into a tight pass, block the entrances with his troops, and rain boulders down on the horses. Quiso managed to wipe out a total of four separate Spanish relief forces using these tactics, and sent Spanish weapons and armor back to his emperor at Cuzco. Francisco Pizarro started to panic. He had just sent more than a hundred horsemen to their deaths at the hands of Quiso, and now had 100 Spaniards to defend Lima. Just months before, he had total control over the Inca. Now, Cusco was besieged, his brother Yuan dead there, an army was outside Lima hunting down Spaniards, and more than a third of his forces were dead. Hearing of Quiso's unprecedented victories, Manco ordered him to proceed to Lima and destroy the city. Not to lay siege to it like he was doing back at Cusco, but to destroy it. Lima was a Spanish city. Founded near the coast to facilitate trade, and unlike Inca cities, it was built on a flat plain. I did I guess trying to demoralize the Spanish, like, holy crap, our whole city is gone. Like, I'm trying to get the Spanish to give up and get out of town, pretty much, right? Like, wow. Props to the Inca, man. Like, they're staying on their siege. I'm surprised that siege is taking so long, you know? So, uh, but wow, man, they're sticking with it, man. Like, they've definitely had enough, and they're not, they're, like they said to the last man, they're not giving up. I don't think so, anyway. Manco's excitement at Kizo's victories had blinded him to the fact that Kizo was using tactics that could not work at Lima. Ordering him to attack Lima was a grave error. Uh. Kizo assaulted the city and failed to take it. He attacked again and again and continued to be beaten back. But his emperor had ordered him to take it, and Kizo knew Manco needed him back at Cusco, that he needed this city and Francisco Pizarro gone and nothing else would be sufficient. On the sixth day of the Siege of Lima, Inca troops again poured down from the hills and marched along the flat plain towards the city, with General Quiso leading the charge, lance in hand, with his hand-selected vanguard. As he entered the city, a sudden barrage of arquebuses roared and ripped through the front line. Santiago was screamed as a cavalry charge rammed through the vanguard. As the dust settled and smoke cleared, the Inca army soon saw their general lying on the ground with a Spanish lance in his heart. Wow. The greatest general the Inca had was dead, and his army soon disappeared into the mountains. Pizarro was now free. I mean, yeah, I guess, like I said, the, the, you know, the king didn't realize the tactics that his great general was using and the fact that, it just, yeah, sure, he's winning? Okay, cool, just take the city then. You know, he realized that that was a big mistake, and the general was very loyal, and he's just doing what he's told, you know, he wasn't going to, you know, when uh, maybe he should have questioned and maybe, like, told, you know, communicated with him somehow, I guess, you know, this is not the right move, but, wow, man, he went down fighting, though. But dang, I'm sorry, I'm on the Inca side here, I mean, because the Incas are the ones are being invaded here, 
and they just want their land back and just want to get back to day to day life. So come on, Inca, man, you got to fight back here, dudes. And we are fighting back, but you know, take this guy out of here, whatever this guy's name is, take him out. <laughs> and his army soon disappeared into the mountains. Pizarro was now free to go break the siege of Cusco. Breathless Chesky's runners arrived from across the empire. They brought unwelcome news to Manco. Kiso was dead, Pizarro was approaching, Diego de Almagro had returned from Chile, defeated but with a sizable army, and Spanish reinforcements were arriving from the north. His fortunes, only so recently extremely promising, had now taken a grim turn. Uh. He had lost, and he knew it. The ten-month-long siege of Cusco was a failure. Manco assembled his chiefs and captains, and with a solemn voice, he informed his people that he would cede his treasures, his home, his empire, and would retreat into the remote rainforest region of the empire called Vilcabamba. From there, he would try and fight another day. As Manco retreated deep into the rainforest, he brought with him the mummies of all the Sapa Incas that had ruled before him, including his father, Huayna Capac, and his great-great-grandfather, Pachacuti. From Vilcambaba, Manco waged an aggressive guerrilla-style campaign against the Spanish. His soldiers ambushed supply convoys, raided new towns, stole caches of weapons and horses, and then vanished back into the rainforest. His men learned how to ride horses, fire guns, and fashion Spanish weapons. But the population of Spaniards in Peru essentially doubled with each passing year. Oh, wow. It became clear to Manco as he aged that survival was possible, but Tahuantinsuyu, a land of four parts together, would never be remade. His state would continue to survive in the rainforest. As Almagro died fighting a civil war against the Pizarros, as Francisco Pizarro was assassinated, while Hernando Pizarro rotted in a Spanish prison, and as Gonzalo Pizarro was executed on the orders of wow. the king, the Inca state clung to life for decades, until eventually, in 1572, 36 years after Manco's rebellion, his son and the last Inca emperor, Tupac Amaru, was captured and executed and the empire of Pachacuti was erased. Thank you for taking this wow. journey through the history of the Inca Empire with us. It has been a pleasure to put this series together for you. We will be continuing this series with the history of the Maya civilization, so subscribe and press the alarm bell. Wow. Well, for some reason, I thought the Inca was going to win, but like, Obviously, this is like the rise and fall of the Inca, so I guess it wouldn't make sense for them to win because then their empire would be back again, and then this series, I guess, would continue, which, you know, obviously there's more episodes to come, but obviously they're not all on the Inca. So I was a little surprised there, but uh, yeah, you know, it just feels like, you know, there's just a big, there's just a big difference between like the tactics, like the armor, like you can't hurt a guy with, you know, metal, the metal, you know, what to call it, or the steel armor or whatever it is, and uh, yeah, horses. I mean, yeah, like horses are like you know are pretty huge. I mean, you could probably just you know take a horse and just plow it through like dozens of men, just like run them over pretty much. And if all they have is clubs, the clubs probably ain't gonna do much at all. And if you're up there with a spear or a sword, you kind of just like whack through them as you charge, right? Kind of. It's kind of how they do it, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, oh, it's kind of a sad ending, you know, because you kind of want them to keep going. But obviously, Inca Empire, you know, disappears, right? Obviously, because it's not around today. And I, don't, I never heard anything recent about it. So, obviously, I had to fall. And I guess that's just kind of cool. Now I know, you know, so because I've heard a lot about them, but I didn't really know much of how, you know, the details or whatnot. So, that was definitely very interesting and that was basically the closure to us, but that was really cool to learn about. The rise of the Maya. See, I have no idea the difference between the, the Inca and the Maya. Like, I really don't. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, but I, at least I now know the, the Maya. I, I guess that's just more of a recent Inca, Inca Empire. I don't know. The, the same area. I just maybe different emperors, you know, from a different background. I'm not sure. So rise of the Maya, I guess that'll be next part of this list. It's cool stuff because, you know, 
I haven't really done much on South America, so it's kind of cool to dive into some history that South America has. But anyways, guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think of the Inca Empire and all that stuff, you know. Uh, you know, they got all that equipment from, uh, you know, the Spanish there. I thought that might, might have came more into play because they took a lot of their armor and stuff, you know, with those... Uh, guerrilla warfare i guess it just wasn't enough and i guess that i mean they might not have had the really know how to use it that well like the tactics wise so i guess that was part of the you know i don't know i'm not sure but anyways guys there you have the great inca uh are now no more well this is like hundreds of years ago but you know what i'm saying so we're on to the maya guys so uh yeah like and subscribe all that fun stuff comment below what your thoughts on this uh the Incas are, like I just said, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in future videos. You guys have a great night, great day. Peace. I am out of here.